I got something special for the E90 today. It's gonna to be getting the three stage intake manifold for our N52 328i engine. Now, I didn't wanna put any more money into this car for making it faster in straight lines, cause you know, M52s aren't really for that, and I do have the M3. However, I don't know, I just really love modifying this car, and I was able to pick this three stage intake manifold up for only a hundred bucks. Now these come off the 330i and the regular N52 328 intakes, they are two stage. However, this has a third stage that makes a little bit more power at the higher RPMs. It doesn't really improve torque that much, but when it comes to power, especially at high RPMs, this helps a lot. Now it's, people say you're typically gonna make about an extra 30 crank horsepower off of these. Cause that's about how much more the 330i's made over the 328. And hopefully with this, and we already have catless headers, full exhaust, AFV stage two intake. Hopefully we should be at 300 horsepower by now, at least crank, but I'm curious to dyno this car. So after I install this, I'm gonna have a video where I dyno this car but this is pretty much an easy bolt on now this did come with dista flaps already but the condition of them were unknown when i bought it these dista flaps do tend to break over time now i did went ahead and pick up some more dista flaps now some people say you have to go oem some people say oh the aftermarket ones are just as bad as the oem ones i'm not sure i bought these oem ones together are like 700 dollars. these are like 50 dollars each but I'm not sure at the current state of these Dista flaps. Now, one way to check is when you take them out and see if they have any play in them. But yeah, we're gonna be installing it into today's video. I'm gonna be showing you how to tell if your Dista flaps need to be replaced or not. And we're gonna see if these cheap Chinese ones are as good as the OEM ones. And of course, if they're not, we're gonna do a bunch of work again and replace them with OEM ones. But guys, let's go ahead and jump right into this install. So let's go ahead and look at these Dista flaps. We have four T25 screws we need to remove to remove the main Dista flap. And then for the other one on the bottom side of the intake manifold, the screws are actually right here. They actually go through it. So these three right here, also T25, remove the other disc flap. We also had to remove two screws, remove this bracket, and I had to use a screwdriver to pry this out. But removing it, and um, yeah, there's no play, but um, half the flap is missing. So I'm definitely glad we bought a replacement. Whoever had this in the past, this 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 was not working at all. I wish I could um find that flap, and I hope it came out. I don't hear anything in there when I shake it, but there's no play per se. Oh, I guess kind of there is play that, but yeah, this thing is broken. This thing's done. So let's go ahead and put our new Dissa flap in. I have never seen that happen before, but I haven't opened up a lot of these to really know it anyway, but there we go, new ones in, and we can just go ahead and tighten those in, not too tight. You know how BMW plastic is, but fits in perfectly. Okay, getting to the bottom, this is flap. I removed the three screws. One of them is much longer than the other, so definitely pay attention, but we do need to remove this bottom hose, which is broken anyway. Um, you just squeeze these to pull off. A lot of people break them in the process. I might, hopefully I don't, but you just squeeze and pull. And it's brittle, it's brittle BMW plastic, so try to be careful. Okay, it actually came out surprisingly easy, easily. I'm really shocked about that. And anyway, we're probably gonna have to pry this one out with the screwdriver as well. All right, so we went ahead and switched to my GoPro. Hopefully this will give you guys a better review and able to see exactly what I'm doing here. But anyway, this bottom Dista flap here, we're gonna take a screwdriver, try to pry it out. This one's really stuck. There we go. And this one, like it's in the open position. Um, I think it's fine. We're gonna replace it anyway. This one is OEM as well. You could see the BMW logo right here, but looks good. And like I said before, the tall one goes in right here. And the two short ones go in right here. And one thing I also did want to mention is 
you do need a tune. Now, some people say you can get some of the power increases. They feel a little something when you just bolt this on, but you don't get the full potential of it until your car is actually tuned to support this. Now that both distal flaps are in and installed, um, I also bought replacement gaskets. I don't know how old these are. The rubber actually doesn't feel that stiff considering how clean they're coming out. But it still it costs like $10 for these gaskets, a little more if you buy OEM. And it's really easy to replace and it can help out a lot. Let's go ahead and throw these new ones on. And there we go, they fit in perfectly. Okay, all the new gaskets are now in place. We have both DISA flaps replaced as well. And that's pretty much most of the prepping for this three-stage intake manifold. Now, pretty much everything else actually directly bolts on to this intake manifold. So we could take our old hose from our stage two, bolt it on to here, and probably replace this connector as well, because that seems damaged. We're also missing one of these little rubber inside bits. We can take that from our old intake and put that on here. Um, but besides that, I would recommend replacing the DISA flaps. You can decide if you want to go OEM or not on that. And I also recommend changing out these gaskets. Let's go ahead and hop onto the car. Now, when it comes to the engine bay, um, I am halfway through doing a oil cooler install. That video will be out soon. But for right now, we're doing the three stage intake manifold, but I am doing both at the same time. So yes, we have a few things kind of misplaced, but you do need to remove your intake. Now I do have the stage two AFE intake, so I didn't really feel like I need to show that. It's not even the OEM one, but yeah, that has to be removed. We're gonna have to undo this um, power steering reservoir. It's just two bolts. You can just move it to the side a little bit. We're gonna take out our cowling filter. Now, when it comes to this, I don't know if I can really show you guys. I am missing like 90% of the bolts that go right here. Um, I was missing some when I first got the car and some of it might be to my own fault. We just remove these out the way, undo this tab. I think, I believe it's a combination of 10 mils and eight mils, maybe a nine mil, I believe. But you just move these fill these out the way on the sides. And come on, I know I have no bolts and there's two little rubber pieces that you gotta move. And there we go. So you have to remove these two rubber pieces right here, one right there, and I forgot where that, it might've might been only one. But yeah, we just move those out the way. You would have a screw right here you would need to remove and one on the other side in the same location. And then we would have to remove all the screws for our actual cabin air filter, but we only have one in we're gonna remove up top. Okay, with that eight millimeter screws out that holds this in place, this simply comes right out. That probably should have been held in a little bit better. Now for this, this actually clips out like this and you just undo these. Some people take a screwdriver. You can kind of do it with your hands if you can get your nails in there. You want to remove this hose. And if I did, oh, I forgot. Ambient temperature sensor right here as well. People always get this snagged. Really breaks though. But once that, make sure everything's loose. You don't feel nothing. That comes right out. Some people delete these. I believe they say almost like 10 pounds of weight savings. I should really do it. I don't know why, but I also like the look of it with the with the cowl on. I don't know why most people don't. I don't know why I do, but 10 pounds of weight savings right there if you do feel the need to remove it. But yeah, that's out the way. Now you would have four hex screws here holding in your engine cover. I believe it's like a hex four or five, maybe a six. Um, I am missing those as well. But we can just go ahead and lift this out here. Get that out the way. I really do want to get a replacement um, engine cover. But there we go. Now we can get some better access to what we are dealing with. This screw is completely loose, but we're going to have to remove these screws and these as well. And a lot of other stuff to get this thing really out the way. Two 10 millimeters holding in the power steering reservoir. Be very careful, but there we go. Those are out. Let's go ahead and remove this out the way. And just get a little bit more space. There we go. We're gonna have to undo a lot of these as well. 
you should simply unhook like that. The other one wasn't even hooked on properly. We're gonna go ahead and move this sensor in the back. I think it's the math sensor, I believe. Little squeeze tab. There we go. We also have a sensor down here for this throttle body. If you just squeeze like so. So for this sensor, just simply squeeze this part right here. And that allows it to come out. Mine's a little bit stuck, so I had to actually come around the front and push it like that from the front to actually get it to come out. But yeah, we got that out. So next, we would need to remove a screw back here that holds the fuel line in. Um, screw's missing. Looks pretty important. <laughs> but yeah, that's missing as well. Now we're gonna have to move the strut brace as well. It's an E14 for this one, but I believe it's an E18 for the center one up there. Okay, next we gotta remove the PVC crankcase hose. Now, this is the hose we saw on the other part of the new three-stage intake manifold that's broken. People always tend to break these. Sometimes people say, just go ahead and buy one when you're doing anything when you're removing the valve cover. I'm not the valve cover, but the um, intake manifold. You basically have to squeeze on two sides and pull this out, but it breaks really easily. I'm, I'm trying to pull mine out. This was already broken a little bit, so... I might just go ahead and order a new hose because since it's already halfway broken, I don't believe we can even take this off properly, but I'm gonna try. Okay, we got it out, but as you can see, that is kind of broken. So we're just gonna go ahead and replace that to be on the safe side. It probably would hold air properly, but it's, it's a $35 hose. It's better to do it now than have to replace it and take this whole intake manifold off again. Now we have a series of nuts and bolts to remove. They are all 11 millimeters. If you see the bottom ones, these are nuts, but then there's a bolt right there, right here, three bolts right there, a bolt in the front, but it's mostly nuts, all 11 millimeter. Let's go ahead and get those removed. Now, if you notice this connector, it actually goes right in between here. So we're gonna have to remove this as well. Just a little squeeze tab that seems to be stuck. There we go. Slide back. And I believe it's a second one as well right here. There we go. Slide this one back. This one isn't stuck in a few tabs. Now, one thing I also see looking at this a little bit better on this bracket right here, there is a clip holding two wires. You do need to squeeze that out. It's way at the bottom right here. I don't even remember even touching this when I removed it the first time, but yeah, it's right there. You just gotta squeeze and move. Now to get to this bottom wire right here, you are gonna probably need a, like a little screwdriver or something. I saw that it was broken on the other intake manifold. There we go. Got that undone. Let's go ahead and clip this back in. I thought it was this little part at first. Oh, and the PVC pipe is stuck. There we go, guys. Broke one hose. Well, we didn't really break it. It was kind of broken already. The second we touched it and we tried to squeeze it, this broke. Intake manifold is out the car. If you want to place the restarter, it is a good time to replace the starter if you wanted to do that. But everything's looking pretty good. I need to see what this is. I think it's just oil leak from when I took out the um, oil filter. Should've done a better job with that. Dang, it's gonna be hard, but you gotta remember to plug all this stuff back in. This one around the bottom side, this one around here. All right, we are ready to put our new stage three intake manifold back in the car. However, one thing I didn't wanna show you guys, these two connectors that sat on the side of your intake manifold, um, these have to actually, these are caps. And I always wondered what these were. And apparently these are actually for the DISA flaps. So I guess they didn't want to use a different wiring harness. And because of that, they just leave these caps on or they sit on the side. And if you want to switch to the stage three, just pull these caps off. And there are your wires. The short one goes to the one that's right here. And the long one goes to the one around the back. But yeah, this is gonna take a lot of finagling to get in here just because we have wires that connect around the back. 
This is never a fun process. I actually hate putting in an intake manifold on this car. This is never a fun process at all. Because we're gonna kind of put it in place. And actually came in place pretty well. It's funny because it's kind of hard to take out. Make sure this fuel line, this fuel line, that was the issue actually taking out that fuel line. Make sure none of these wires get stuck. Looking good. And then just making sure everything's okay. Cause like I kind of have to get it around this fuel line that it got stuck around last time. There we go. And then we can start connecting some stuff. So we got this wire on the back. People kind of forget about this one. Can't forget it. We need a wire to our new DISA flap, which you look at these wires, it's the long one all the way to the left. That's gonna go inside here around and connect to our new DISA flap. Come on. There we go. That's in place, that's all tight. Those are the two that goes around the back. Our PVC is already connected. This goes to our new disc flap. I'm just worrying about the things that are on the back of the manifold for right now, making sure there's not too much tension on anything. You know what? It might be better to route that wire through here. I feel a lot of tension on it as I'm putting it down. So let's actually pull that wire back out. And route it through here. I hope that's okay. Just feel a lot of tension as I'm putting it in. I don't want any issues or any chance. Cause this kind of doesn't seem like it's actually even holding it that well. There we go. New wire is in. And that's everything that goes behind the disc. So this sits in the corner. These two go around and head up here. I don't remember correctly. Uh, do they go through the intake manifold or do they go on the side? I think they actually go through. If I remember correctly, these sit there and go through here. Come on. Yeah, that feels right. And right here, they don't actually, you can even tell by the way they're bent. They wouldn't go around. I think I'm right about that. Okay, I had to search it up and double check it, but I am right about that. Um, that's everything for the inside. So we can go ahead and try to snap this in place. So the intake manifold has all these aluminum bolts to sit on, and these are aluminum, so they can, they're long and they can snap. There we go, that's in place. This fuel line, we are sadly missing the screw for, which I don't like at all. So we're gonna probably put a temporary screw in there. I remember this was hooked on. So yeah, we're gonna leave that like that for now. This sits right here, but this is in place. We still have a lot more wires to go. This bottom wire and harness, you basically need to make sure everything is connected to something. So this right here, this goes to our new DISA and that actually barely reaches. <laughs> Let's put this in place. Is that all it got? I think it can go some more. I know it can go some more. It's like all it wants to go. I hate that. I don't, I don't want it to wiggle out of place like it did last time. This looks a little oily, but. Come on. I know you want to go in. There we go. That into the new DISA. This, it'd be kind of be, I remember correctly, there's just certain ways in that wire, like this wire probably needs to go, just looking at this, probably needs to go underneath here. That's all buttoned back up. But yeah guys, you just basically put in everything back together and don't forget the PVC pipe at the back here. Those are the main things I want to show you guys that are concerns, but everything else is just redoing what, you're, what you undid. That's really it. Nothing different besides those wires. Everything else is connecting everything, putting the throttle body back on, making sure these wires connect to the throttle body. And yeah, it's just putting everything back together. So I'm gonna let you guys know when I'm done.
Once everything was put back together, I went ahead and test drove the car. Now, without a tune, there was no check engine light and the car drove perfectly fine with this three-stage intake manifold. However, I didn't notice a real power difference. Some people say you can feel a power difference without a tune. I don't notice a difference at all. So if there is a difference, at least when it comes to my car, the difference is negligible. So I went ahead and went up to um, Beamer Motor World in Winder, Georgia to go ahead and get the car reflashed with an active Auto Works tune. Now, if you don't, don't watch my previous videos, this car already did have an active Auto Works tune and already has um, active Auto Works headers. It has a full exhaust and it has an AFE stage two intake. So now that we have the three stage intake manifold on, they went ahead and reflashed it for that. And now I felt a real power difference. So if you don't know, like I said before, it increases the power in the higher rev ranges. So now the car just like it just builds power all the way to redline. I didn't really feel any more torque. There's no more power on the bottom end, but around 5,000 RPM where I felt like the car would just die off a little bit or just like this wasn't gonna keep going. It just goes all the way straight to 7,000 RPMs and it feels amazing. Honestly, what it really reminds me of it kind of feels like the NAM cars. Not power-wise, but just the way the power band is, which just keeps going the red line. Like I drove my friend's E46 M3. It feels like that, but just a lot less horsepower. It just keeps building to the red line. Definitely makes it a lot more fun to drive. I really like the power band now. It doesn't feel like it dies off anymore. It makes it really fun to just keep revving out the car, which kind of makes you drive faster, but it just makes it so much more fun. It's kind of do pulls. Even for a car that only makes around 270 crank, it still feels really, really fun to drive. Now, I did tell you guys I am going to get this car dynoed, and I'm really hoping it makes 300 horsepower. But after looking at the numbers here and see what other people are making, I'm not going to make 300 wheel. I'm probably going to make about 260 wheel, which would be kind of close to 300 crank, but we'll see. So definitely stay tuned for that video. And this drift footage I am showing is what was while the three-stage intake manifold was on. I just uploaded that drift, that drift video first. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what other power mods you might want to see me do to my M52 before I go ahead and put it on a dyno because I don't see a lot of dyno videos for these M52s. And if I do see a dyno video, they are not showing numbers. So I want to go ahead and do both. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you really care, hit that subscribe button. Peace, guys.